Um, amidst all the social and political pressure to crack down on Elon Musk, do you think that the coalition could at least give the public some safeguards that our freedom of political expression mm. will be preserved going forward? Yeah, thanks, Millie, for your question. Um, it's a, a national sport to pile on to billionaires, and that's will park that. But I think one thing that social media has allowed is the public square is now open for everybody uh, for a whole range of very diverse views. And I would hate to see any crackdown um, on violent pornography or online misogyny uh, to actually mean that legitimate political views of difference in a country as diverse as ours aren't able to be expressed. I think one of the um, concerns I've had uh, over the last few months in particular, particularly since October 7, is the level of um, disparate views and how they're being expressed in our multicultural country and the uh, level of, you know, the breaking of our social cohesion, which has sort of led to our success. That means we have to be able to express our ideas respectfully. We have to accept that people legitimately can hold an opposing view and it doesn't mean they're stupid and it doesn't mean they're wrong. And if we're going to actually want to continue to have the vibrant society that we do have, We've got to allow for that. And I'm concerned if we go too far um, with censorship, we won't have that platform for expression available to us. Tracy, there is a big debate now about what goes on on X and whether we should be doing more regulating of the internet. What's your view? Um, I, I don't agree with any kind of um, censorship in a, in a general sense. Uh, I don't think Elon Musk is contributing to any um, social cohesion split inside this country. I think our media, our mainstream media, is doing enough of that. I think um, our politicians do enough of that. When you talk about people being able to have different perspectives and different points of views, and it's OK to have that, and yet we don't see that in politics ever. We don't see it in mainstream media. We, we see this absolute divide to the point where people are starting to think that when they read in the newspaper that it's unsafe for women to walk down the street in this country, mm. people start believing it. And that kind of fear is what is leading to social cohesion breakdown in this country. We have to stop the fear. And whoever's doing the fear-mongering mm. is what we've got to stop. I just want to take you to the women feeling safe, because a lot of women are expressing that, especially after mm. the mm. murder of... Uh, that woman in Ballarat who was mm. just going for a jog in mm. the morning. I mean, it's just unthinkable and I know Ballarat's really suffered so immensely recently. That's where some of that comes from, doesn't it? It is, but it's not... You know, when we read reports that women are too afraid to walk down the street, I know lots of women that are not too afraid to walk down the street. I know there's a lot of men uh, who have our backs. Mm. You know, that is the society we live in. Mm. We, we look at the people that, that um, you know, try to rush forward at Bondi. You know, the guy that stood at the top of the escalator. Um, the... Bollard man. Bollard yeah, man. exactly. As I mean, known. you know, that we, we don't live in a society where we all turn a blind eye. We absolutely don't. And I really get so... Um, I don't like being enraged because I think that just leads to more splits and we have to have these discussions with a sense of, uh, you know, trying to remain calm and have the proper discussions. And it, it does get me really angry when I see that our society is reported as having all of these major fault lines. Of course there are fault lines everywhere, but there's only one way that you can stop those fault lines from getting even bigger, and that is to have the ability to have the town square, to hear different points of view, and people will choose um, for themselves. The public is not stupid. Mm. And unfortunately, I think we've been fed, you know, this side or that side in the mainstream media for so long, people are giving up on mainstream media. That's why they're tuning out. That's why they're going to YouTube. You ask many of the young people, they're getting their information from social media because of that, because we have let them down. Let me just mm. ask you, Mark Speakman, that's really your question at the heart of it is this dispute with the e-safety commissioner mm. with Elon Musk and the implications. Do you think that that footage of, of uh, that um, uh, um, attempted murder, really, that, attempt, that stabbing in Western Sydney should be pulled down across the world? 
Uh, not across the world. Not Why not? Across the world. Why not across the world? Well, I don't think Australia has any business in exercising takedown powers in other countries. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If we say we're entitled to have takedown orders apply across the world, well, then China or France mm, or yeah, Paraguay exactly. comes back to us. Um, we'd have to accept what they're doing as well. So I don't think it has to be worldwide. I do think on balance uh, that particular video uh, should be geo-blocked in Australia for, for what it's worth. I mean, there are limits on how effective that can be. Um, on the night that it happened, I stumbled across it. I wasn't looking for it, but I found it. I found it quite disturbing. Mm. Um, but, you know, things like that which, which incite violence or can incite... Um, you know, extreme violence, I don't think should be on the internet. That said, um, I agree with Tracy. I think we've got to have a light touch on censorship at, at the end of the day in terms of speech. Mm. Free speech should be the default position and the best way to root out uh, a view that is wrong or, or misinformation is to expose it by argument rather than trying to ban okay, it. Okay, but at the same time, you've said, for instance, that you want to crack down on misogynist content online. What do you think, Bridget? Should that be pulled out? Well, this is, this is content the great debate, right? It Who's is. Who's going to determine what is able to be seen and what isn't able to be seen? I do back the eSafety Commissioner's recommendation to put age verification on, you know, violent pornography, misogynist content mm. uh, and violent videos. I think our young people shouldn't be able to see that. It was one of her strong recommendations. We back it and we hope the government comes and backs us with that, particularly in the light of... Um, you know, particularly violent pornography and the impact, it, the flow-on impact that has over an individual's Murray, lifetime. Murray, is that and something you back? Well, perspective all of, all, of women. All of those things are current right now under review, um, and and you know there will be changes as a result of that. I, I do want to pick up this point that there are people who are trying to conflate um, restriction on social media around offensive, violent content with freedom of expression. Mm. We have always had restrictions on freedom of expression, defamation laws, um, treason, contempt of court. You know what? We have classification systems when it comes to movies, mm. TV shows. Because but there's always debates a, around there that. There are, there are. Can and I just add mm. to that, guys? Mm. Um, I just think that it's worth noting that Australians typically don't like being told what to do by foreigners, and foreigners really don't like being told what to do by Australia. Do you actually think that bringing in an American e-safety commissioner to govern all of these laws is wise and also palatable to the public, given our concerns about our ability to express ourselves as a democracy? OK. Well, I don't think anyone's talking about bringing in an American e-safety commissioner. We've got an Australian one who, who should govern and, and have the ability to regulate content within Australia. There's obviously... You mean her accent, but she's an Australian. Well, she's an yeah, Australian. I mean, I'm, I don't think we need to have a crack at someone about their accent. I mean, she's the Australian e-safety commissioner. The... the um, but, uh, I mean, I, I would like to understand why anyone thinks, or why Elon Musk, for that matter, thinks it is OK to share the kind of material that he, his platform has been sharing. How does that help anyone? We've always restricted movies... Um, which the community thinks go too far, uh, TV shows as well. Um, and, I mean... Why are you passionate about this, Bridget? Yeah, I am. You are, I'm, but why? I am, I am, and I have been... I was moved not by the alleged stabbing. I was moved by Bishop Emmanuel's prayer for the perpetrator. I thought that was an amazing display of his Christianity in just a moment I couldn't imagine. I know we can get on the internet and we can see JFK's murder, we can see the atrocities of the Holocaust. That is there to remind that 7, you know, um, 11th of September, 9-11, sorry, 9-11, all of these atrocities of humanity are able to be viewed to remind us how bad we can be. So you think and this so should think be it, available? I think that it's um, appropriate to sometimes have mm. these horrific images and instances Including available. Including this one? Should it be available in Australia in your I view? I think that Australian laws should be complied with in Australia. Um, do, <laughs> do you I, support those I, Australian laws being used to pull well, the video the down laws, in Australia? And that's what's being tested before the courts right now. Was it a reasonable efforts by X um, to block that particular video by geo-blocking it? That's why, the question before. Why would before. you block that? It's geo-blocked. But have you watched the 7pm news every night? Mm -hmm. And we see what's happening in Israel and Gaza? Yeah. Mm. Seriously? We're not blocking that, are we? we How horrendous is that? And could you imagine being that victim's okay. family and mm. seeing that? Mm.
Mm. All right. Mm. Let's let's just. Mm. Okay. So you think there's a double standard? There's a double standard. There's absolutely a double standard. I, I've I've got neighbours who have family in in Lebanon uh, and relatives in Gaza, and every single night we're seeing that. Mm. That's real. That's not just someone over there, somebody different. You know, this is the stuff, and if we don't see it and we don't understand what's happening in our world, how do we ask the right questions in order to fix it? I guess, I guess, I guess and Tracy and I were having a bit of a chat about this before we came on air as well, I guess the difference that I see is that mainstream media are expected to comply with particular journalistic mm. and other standards. Mm. Until the eSafety Commissioner has got involved, the online space has been completely unregulated and, and I don't think that's OK. Um, and, you know, we've spent most of the night having a discussion about um, what is influencing male violence in particular and I think most of us can see this is playing a role. I don't think we can sort of say that on the one hand and then not do something about this as well. OK.